As a moderator, we ha it's my pleasure to have Dr. Srini Tamala, who's joining us remotely uh, from Florida. He's actually traveling, but somewhere between Florida and New York, he's right there. Good morning, Srini. He's the director for vascular services, uh, Florida vascular specialist. He's also the chair of CLI Glo Global Society Education Committee, and he's a voluntary assistant professor at Miami Health System. So it's a pleasure to have Srini as ever. We love him in person and remote. We'll take it this time. Good morning, good morning. Uh, that was a great introduction. And the reason we decided to do a collaborative case such as this, there's Pablo. Pablo, come on in. The reason we decided to do this case together is because uh, there's been a lot of emails uh, coming to us uh, at our website regarding venous disease. As all of you know, this year we've been uh, having a little bit more of a focus on venous. And um, and I think that uh, it's it's a good good sign to know that people want to learn the right techniques. And, and uh, so therefore we picked a case which I think is, is representative uh, in terms of what needs to be done for a difficult situation uh, with IVC filters. So uh, without further ado, as, as Dr. Kim is getting ready, we're going to go ahead and have uh, uh, our fellow present the case, and then we'll get started with Rahul reviewing uh, with Pablo the CT and everything. Thank you. So it's a 57-year-old woman. She has hypertension and venous disease with chronic DVT. Uh, extensive history starting from a provoked DVT in the perioperative setting of knee surgery back in 2012. Unclear really if the INR was continuously therapeutic in the initial treatment period. Um, she's essentially now suffering from a post-thrombotic syndrome with left greater and right swelling, redness, pain in the left leg, and a CT venogram showing some venous outlet obstruction. She's a C4. In November 2012 is when we first saw her. She had presented to the ER at that point with uh, left knee pain in the post-operative period following knee surgery. Ultrasound showed acute DVT in the left common femoral vein, the femoral and the pop. She underwent a thrombectomy of the left common femoral vein by a popliteal approach. And an infusion catheter was basically uh, left in place with uh, TPA for 24 hours and DC'd on Coumadin. February 12th, uh, 13, a few months later, she was seen in clinic, therapeutic INR, symptoms have improved, not fully resolved. She came in in April at that time for a clearance for contralateral knee surgery, and uh, essentially uh, ultrasound was repeated, which showed some improvement from the past. Uh, there was some deep reflux uh, and, and essentially chronic DVD at that point. Uh, in April, uh, in the perioperative setting of her knee surgery, an IVC filter was placed uh, as her clot had uh, uh, occurred in that setting in the past. And so we went ahead while Coumadin was held, the IVC filter was placed. It was an Optis uh, Cordis IVC filter that was put on April 15th. She was seen once in 2014 and then followed up again in June of 2015, continued on Coumadin, seen in the office, Again, duplex was done. Uh, there was some old deep, uh, deep DVT of the common femoral vein, profunda, femoral pop, and gastrimus. That was really unchanged from the prior study in 2014. She also had some deep and uh, superficial incompetence as well as in the, in the perforator as well. We lost her to follow up until about 2019. She came back to the office, uh, was, not, was feeling well, wanted to come off the Coumadin. We put her on Zarelto at that point. Followed up again 2021, again, some left greater than right swelling at that point. A CT venogram at that point showed no thrombus in the IVC filter. Uh, long segment stenosis extending from the left common femoral vein to the left, uh, the left iliac to the left common with associated calcifications. Unfortunately, she traveled out of the country at that point and then, you know, uh, came back a little bit later, uh, again in April of 2023, and she said, okay, you know, I really want something done. I'm having a lot of symptoms at this point. Uh, I'm not going anywhere now. I'll be around. So another CT venogram was done. Her leg was huge at that point. A lot of swelling, a lot of pain. So we did another CT. Her meds are Zeralto and Amlodipine. Uh, this is our CAT scan that was done in April. You can see the IVC filter is clear down here. I'll show you another picture, but there's pretty extensive compression of a di pretty diminutive left common iliac. You can see it in this picture over here uh, with the uh, uh, the right common iliac and the left um, uh, uh, osteal uh, iliac vein. But uh, it was read as a diminutive left common iliac vein with proximal compression into the right common iliac artery consistent with chronic occlusive uh, sequelae of DVT associated with the May Turner syndrome. She had multiple venous collaterals in the sub -Q tissue, and they were saying to correlate with signs and symptoms of a post-thrombotic syndrome, which is essentially what, what she has at this point. Um, 
So, so I guess that's the reason why we call. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk yeah, a little yeah. bit. So that's why we call Rahul and Pablo, and we talked about it. I mean, so this is a lady I've, uh, we've known for since 2013. I mean, she presented with acute thrombosis post with an occluded filter. I mean, with an occluded uh, entire system. So at that time, we went ahead and uh, we lysed her, and then and then uh, and then at that time, because she had recurrent second surgery, uh, I think that that one of our vascular surgeons was with us. We we decided to put in this Optis filter, and then basically she's been lost to follow up. True. She's been lost to follow up. She's in and out, comes back and forth, you know, comes with some swelling when she has symptoms and comes back. So at this stage, we're thinking that, you know, she has a tremendously swollen leg now, post thrombophlebitic syndrome with iliac vein compression with an IVC filter in place. So I guess we're open to anything here, and, and she is too, in the sense of what the right thing to do here is. From what, 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 what our thought was at this stage, the IVC filter should be removed because, I mean, it's causing not, it's going to cause nothing but trouble in the future potentially. And, and do we or do we not treat this? iliac vein, uh, um, you know, compression that's shown on CT in a patient that has a, 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 a thrombotic syndrome. Pablo? Um, so, yes, I, I think it's very important to uh, make sure you, we follow up on a lot of these patients because we do uh, lose a lot of patients that have IBC filter. And any, anytime I put an IBC filter, I try to bring them within six months, mm -hmm. and that is very important. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, you as a cardiologist or interventional radiology, you see a lot of patients that come to your office and, and they have filter for over five years, over 10 years. And, mm -hmm. and here at Mount Sinai Hospital, what we have work as a team, as, as a collaboration, and really t take us to the next level of patient care. And the teaching was maybe 20 years ago, 10 years, oh, we shouldn't take this out. We're going to have a complication. Maybe if, if the straws are coming out of the IVC, maybe it has to be done open. But now with the experience of interventional radiology, experience of interventional cardiology here with uh, vascular surgery, we're able to take care of this patient, even with filters that are out there for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important because uh, personally, I don't, Without any major data, I don't feel comfortable stopping anticoagulation yep. on this patient with mm -hmm. IVC filter. And we see so many elderly that have DBT, acute DBT, only once, and they're having IVC, and we can't stop anticoagulation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important uh, to take out the filter. So that, that's one thing that we really have to follow up. But sometimes we lose them. But then, you know, with, with, with the collaboration, with the experience that we have, we can really take out all these filters out and make sure they are all anticoagulation. The next point is, yeah, IVC filter, um, uh, after the IVC filter, the iliac compression is, if you have, I think if you find it on CT, on MRI, they tend to be pretty dramatic on IVs as well. That is my experience. So I think, I think there's a high likelihood, in my opinion, that this patient, with her symptoms that she has, she may need a, uh, a, mm -hmm. um, a iliac uh, stenting Got as well. It. Rahul, uh, uh, Srini, any, yeah. any, um, any points on your end? I mean, uh, I was going to ask Rahul what he looks for on the CT uh, to see whether, whether these filters should come out. What are some of the tips and tricks yeah. you can teach so the cardiologists? The, I mean, the first thing is just identifying what kind of filter it is, right? So sometimes we have a lot of patients that come to us that the filters were placed elsewhere or they don't even remember they had a filter placed. Um, and so the first thing is just trying to identify the filter, make sure it's not broken. Um, so if it's broken, it actually makes us more tend to take it out because if it's going to break, broken once, it's going to break more. Um, and then, you know, looking for penetration. This filter does, is not known to penetrate uh, the IVC wall, uh, but most some of the other filters uh, are, are known to penetrate the, the IVC and, and are more prone to fracture. Um, you obviously, want to look at thrombosis, uh, tilts are the other things we want to look for. And then, you know, we we... I think in patients who are younger, on the healthier mm -hmm. side, we are recommending taking almost all of the filter that, filters out. Some of them we do have to balance, obviously, the risk of taking the filter out versus you know how old they are. You know, we have 85-year-old patients who are coming who are bed-bound, probably just going to leave the filter and not really worth taking it out. Um, but you know, we've had patients who – I had a patient who was like 35, had a green field you know, placed when he was a child. And he was having pain. Like we, we, we took that out, right? Like, took that out. Yeah. Wow. So we've we've taken the ones out 30, 40 years out. So um, filters don't even exist anymore. We've taken out. So wow. yeah. So we've our techniques have changed a lot. Um, have improved a lot. They're not uh, they're not necessarily always elegant. It's a little bit of just a brute force. But uh, yeah. So uh, but you just have to be prepared for for all the sort of, of possibilities course. that can go wrong. Oh, I just asked, do you do routine imaging before you take these out? Yeah, so everyone gets okay. at least okay. a non-con CT, you know, for obviously okay. a CT venogram before. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's we, we get a CAT scan. Sometimes even an X-ray. Sometimes you can't tell exactly what's going on. So even sometimes just a KUB um, is oh, helpful. KUB, yeah, okay. yeah. Wow. Okay. Srini, anything? No, I think, yeah. yeah it's, it's, well, thanks for the invitation, PK. Great to be here. Rahul and I have, have known each other almost 15 years or so. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a long time. 
But I think, you know, this case really shows you a couple of things. One is that venous disease is much more prevalent than PAD. And when you think of how much PAD we see in the U.S. and the world, how, there's almost 20 times more venous disease. The second thing is, is that I think we're doing a better job at follow-up and filter removal. You know, if you look at the latest data around 2014, I think about one in four were being removed compared to one in seven a decade before. We're not perfect, but we're getting better. I think another important point for, for everybody, your listeners especially, is that, you know, these filters, and we know this from a lot of the data now, is that after about a year, these filters are not really helping you as much Correct. as we think. <clears throat> And what's happening is we're starting to see all the complications that Rahul and Pablo and everybody are talking about from thrombosis to stenosis to deep venous reflux because of occlusion and obstruction and so forth. And so I have, a, I suspect that this patient, even once you take out this obtuse filter, which is a tough filter to take out, by the way, is that there's likely to be chronic thrombosis plus stenosis in that inferior cava. So you may have to do some level of revascularization in inferior vena cava as well. So great case. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So so question now, now, Rahul. I mean, we want to do the yeah. IVIS and we'll, we'll do it. I mean, what do you, what, how do you handle these cases? What do you, what's your steps? So, again, I think we look at the orientation. So, I, obviously, you can't see the picture. So this, oh, you can put the picture up, guys. So, put the angiogram so up for us. So, it's just a quick venogram. And you can see the filter here. So, one, you know, it's an optese because it has the hook on the bottom. These were designed to actually come out within the first six months. Mm -hmm. So, we're way past that. So, the, the sides can get a little embedded. Um, so here, if you notice, it's a little bit tilted towards the, the bottom apex is tilted towards the right. So that's sort of how I would choose which side to go to remove it out of. So we'll come from the right. So everything's sort of in our advantage. So when we have to pull this down, our sheath will kind of track right up over it and, and slide over it. Um, we've prepped the neck as well, just because yes. sometimes if it's mm -hmm. really embedded, you may have to what we call Chinese finger trap and kind of come from both ends. Um, we're sort of prepared to, to try the different techniques. So we, I tend to try to do the easiest first, which is just snare the bottom, see if I can I get lucky and it comes out. If not, then I'll escalate pretty quickly and and move on to either. For this one, I kind of like what they call the hangman technique, um, which is basically to take a sauce and I'll, I'll sh we'll probably end up having to show it to you. Is just to um, hook the bottom apex with a with a sauce, um, bring a glide wire down, and then snare it. So you have like it comes as almost like a lasso all the way around, um, and then you you have it hooked. And you have to do both ends. Um, we also have forceps, which are the limol forceps, which are on a metal rod. They're actually endobronchial forceps. Um, and sometimes you have to use those as well just to get enough grip and force to, to pull it out. These ones are also somewhat notorious for coming apart. So I was telling Dr. Uh, PK earlier that, you know, we have to be prepared also for just the two apexes to come apart. Um, and then what you're left with is, is the side arms that are just too embedded in the IVC. And then that's actually okay because it's not really an obstruction to mm -hmm. flow. Um, and so that's sort of what I look at. The other thing is obviously if we had an extensive thrombosis uh, going all the way up through it, you could also make the argument, and then there's data to show that it doesn't matter whether you take it out or just stent right through it. Here, obviously, we're not going to stent through it because our problem's no, not there. Yeah. But uh, so, 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 Rahul, can you tell on CAT scan that the uh, that it's embedded in the wall or no? Not, it's it's hard, but you know, if it's touching the wall and it's been in that long, it's going to be embedded. Whether yeah, yeah. now whether it's embedded to the point where I can't get it out, I can't really tell. You can't tell that until yeah. And and it's when and your technique of getting it out, do you try to wiggle it, or I mean, I'm just curious on what, what your thoughts are. Pull really hard. Just pull really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for this one. So the you know the ones that are more like the umbrella shapes are yeah. the greenfield. So the greenfield has two sets of hooks that are counter um, counter oriented. So you have to actually sort of twist. I, I tend to twist it and almost like hmm. sort of like you're taking out a um, a, um, a wine cork. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. a wine cork, and just sort of cork it out. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. You, so in, in terms of filters, I know these aren't used much anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, is, are the newer generation filters easier to take out, or, or, or are, they, are they all just kind of the same? They're, they're a little bit easier to take out, because these ones, again, after six months, they, the, it, it gets pretty embedded into the wall, the, the sides. Um, the more conical-shaped ones are a little bit easier to get out, but they're a little bit more prone to tilt. Tilt, yeah. Um, and so they're also, if you want to go, and those are sort of probably ones that came out in like 2008, 2010, 12 range. Now, if you talk about the more modern ones, they're actually ones that are convertible. So they're ones that have like a dissolvable suture in the middle, um, and it just pops open. So you don't actually have to remove it. Um, there's one that actually has a hook in the middle. You just pull out that hook, and it converts into just basically a big IVC Extent. Um, and then there's one that's not approved in the U.S. yet, but they're actually starting a study from Adiant, which is actually the whole thing just dissolves after about. Oh, so it's a it's a bioresorbable. Yeah, yeah. So wow. it has two metal wow. hooks that stay on the wall, but the whole thing is just bioabsorbable. Yeah. So, Paolo, so when, go ahead, go ahead, Vishal. No, so I guess there was a question, which is I think a, from a clinical perspective. Uh, 
let's say a patient presents with you who's asymptomatic. In this case, of course, there's a lot of symptom-driven yeah. intervention. But if it's an asymptomatic presenting, at what time does the table tilt where the risk, you'll say, is more than a benefit? Like a 45-year-old guy walks in, like Rahul is saying, 10 years later, had an IVC filter when he was a kid or a young guy. Now he's like, I want to get the filter out. But my question is, where, when do I say, no, now it's too risky for you, so we leave it because it's hanging for 10 years versus, no, it doesn't matter, I'm going to still pull it out. Like, where does the balance tips towards the other side? That's the real question I guess I have. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's tricky. I think it, it really depends on the filter type because I think, you know, for, for this filter, I think if she was completely asymptomatic, never had any issue, you know, even though she's in her 50s, I, you could make the argument just to, to leave it be, right? She's going to be on anticoagulation anyway. You, you could probably make the argument just to leave it be. Um, but if she had like a more of the conical shaped one, I think the, right. uh, those ones, so, the so risk is lower. What is the it. risk of leaving it be? Can it thrombose? Correct. Can it can it erode? I mean, how do you, is there a way to predict it, Pablo, in these kind of cases? It's not for this type of filter. I think erosion, as uh, Rahul said, is, is very minimal. Uh, but with the other filter, like the select are known to, they can erode because yeah. they have a uh, lot more uh, legs of, uh, that can come out of the abyss filter. And we, we have seen it going into uh, the small bowels yeah, and, yeah. and cause some major problems. So I, I think those filters will be more prone uh, and I'll take a little bit more risk to, the, to remove it. Uh, now, I, you know, these are questions that we always grapple with with any case that we do. Uh, when we do a carotid issue, a sure. can a 19 year old uh, do an open carotid or not? And, and you, ha you have to see the patient in the office. I see a lot of patients in, in, the, in the range of 80 to 90, I'm sorry, 60 to 90, that I think if they're independent, if they're walking, my preference is to take the filter out. Mm -hmm. And get them off anticoagulation because I, I I think a lifetime anticoagulation is it. not it is risky as well. Sure, no so question. So we really have to go by case by case. Perfect. So so for the sake of time, we've got bilateral accesses. We're going to do an IVUS of the left iliac for yeah. now. Let's go. So let's do a quick IVUS here, Flora and Rahul. You can. Go right. ahead, Actually, guide us you through this here. Can, can you tell us what side sheets do you have right now in? So we decided here to go with uh, an uh, IJ. We just put in a five French in the IJ just to have it. We've got, we've got for the sake of time, we've got bilateral 10 French sheets, uh, which we're ready to upgrade to whatever Rahul and Pablo need. And what, so what I just, what we, me and Rahul were talking, we just do a quick IVIS to kind of demonstrate what we're seeing on the, on the left iliac uh, to confirm what we saw in CT and then decide, uh, I guess, the next steps. I'm going to leave it to those guys, to both of them. So let's record, guys, and then I'll put the IVIS up for the, for the audience. So I, you can see the struts of the filter. I'm at the bottom of the filter there. I'm just going to slowly pull back and let Rahul just kind of read what he sees. Yeah, so here, we're, you know, we're still in the IVC. We're coming down, coming down still. It's going the, real slow. Yeah, yeah. And then here's the getting into the bifurcation. You can already see there's some wall thickening as we're coming right. into the left common iliac vein. Um, and you can see, if you get a sense here, the, the left Ooh, common iliac kind of, vein is very, very, very narrowed and right. a lot of sclerosis around uh, the vein. There's a little bit of compression there. Um, and you can just see the vein is very small, but it and it's a little bit of right compression there. there, usually at the sort of level of the hypo or coming around the SI joint. Mark? Um, so it's pretty much around the catheter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very, very small. So, yep. you know, so, some of these cases can be tricky because it's like, oh, it, it's pretty round. It looks pretty good. I'm and I think here you're in the okay. sheath. Yep. Um, you know, so we probably will, uh, we'll eventually have to pull the sheath back. But um, it, it can be very tough. You want me to pull the sheet back and continue the IVIS all the way to the end? Let me do that. Yeah. yeah hold on. Let's uh, stop recording, guys. We're going to record another one. Because I'm going to guess this goes probably all the way down Let's close see. to the common femoral. I'm just going to yeah. go up a little bit here. Okay, start recording here. Yeah. Just do a quick pull back here. This is pretty much the, I guess, the external record, guys. internal. And then now uh, here. Record. Yep. There you go. Yeah. And you can see even the external is very, oh, very, very, very small. Yeah. yeah, and a little bit of maybe. And you thrombus. can see some calcium and some thrombus, thrombus there. Thrombus, they're yeah. old, chronic. Yeah. And then we're coming into yep. And you can see there it's very, very Oof. tight. Wow. Right yeah. at the ligaments, <laughs> and then hopefully it pops up a little bit more, but it may not. It may not. Yeah. So nope. even the common fumble there is a little bit jacked. Yep. Oh um, yeah. So these. Walk it up. Yeah. So these cases are always a bit trickier, um, but. You know, you can get sort of full because it looks good on this side, but if you, we, we didn't run up the other side, but the other, we did a venogram on the other side. It's the, the iliac vein is quite large. So there's definitely Flush a big forward. size mismatch. And Pablo, I don't know, you, you see a little bit more of this stuff than, than I do, but. Yeah, the, the tricky part about this is uh, if there is a uh, stenotic area Wait. beyond the uh, femoral vein, what would you do? And and do we do we stand across the ingrained ligament or not? Yeah, and I think, um, I think for, 
to make sure that the, the stain stays painted. Sometimes, sometimes we may have to. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to do a venogram of the other side, as uh, Rahul was mentioning. You can see the size of the vein is quite large compared to the other side, which is quite small. If you want, we can do an uh, Ivis here as well, Rahul. It's up to you. I don't, I don't, you don't need it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so anticoagulation wise, Rahul, we've, we're, we gave heparin, which yeah. is obviously reversible. ACT, last ACT was 250. I think we're pretty reasonable for this kind of situation. And uh, now you've got the Ivis. So, yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys want to do? So, I think it, before we stent, we would actually take out the filter yes. before we stent. Right. So, um, I'm actually going to prepare as if we're going to try to have to rip this thing out. So if we were just going to snare it, we would probably just put a 10 French sheath in and, and an eight and then try to snare and then sort of collapse it down. But I don't, I'm not ter terribly confident this is going to work. So we're going to actually upsize to an, an 18 French uh, sheath here. So from the groin, I actually like the centrant sheath. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit more rigid. Um, it's also about the right length. Unfortunately, it's not long enough to do it from the neck because um, it's only about 28 centimeters in length. So if we have to come from the neck, we have to use the cook sheath. So the cook sheath is nice in the sense it has the right length, uh, cook blade. but uh, un blade. unfortunately, um, it doesn't have a lot of uh, great columnar strength uh, when you're trying to rip stuff out. I've got a little nick there for you. It should be okay. Right. I think this is Raul, Raul, do you mind giving us a dry uh, uh, cine of the filter itself to see the orientation? I know we have a DSA mm -hmm. shot. The audience would like to do a, see a magged up dry cine just for the sure. filter. Let's just get the sheet in. So we're putting it. So what? What we we're on a super core wire. Uh, we've got we've got like a little nick going in the groin, and now we're gonna get this up right now. So I'm just on floor for a hole because it's a new room. Obviously, it's yeah. different in every part of the hospital. So there's the sheet goes up to that spot. Yep. So if you can uh, put me on coronary, my friend, yeah, and mag it up for me. I'll just want to uh -huh. show everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. And mag it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mag it up. Oh, the shadows on the there. side. Yeah. Yep. Okay, here no, we I go. Think yeah, beautiful. Thing is that, nice. Uh, there it is. You know, amazingly, for how long this filter has been in place, the vena cava and everything looks a lot better than you would expect. You know, I get the eight French sheath there. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing too is if you notice, Rahul put in a very large sheath to start, and I think the mistake is because you know we're a big referral center for a lot of filter removals. Is that we used to start with smaller sheets and then yeah, you just start to get rid of this. You would get stuck halfway through. But now we <laughs> really yep, that's in floral. six yep. Yeah, I remember. The neck, exactly. The groin. Yeah, I remember first doing this. I, I, I'm pretty this sure I've, floral, I've had yep. to call uh, Pablo to come and do a, cut, a groin <laughs> cut down because I've gotten one stuck in the groin, you know, using the right sheaths, especially if you have to rip it out um, backwards. Um, some of the other ones, like the conical shaped ones, will actually invert the filter to remove it. And if you do it through the wrong sheath and from you the, need no, the actually, okay, we're gonna try this first. So yeah, right. the snare first. The snare first. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I um, think that's a, that's a very good point. Srini brings up. So now, Rahul, equipment wise, what are you using? So yeah, so I put an eight French yeah, sheath in. So I like to, if we take these out, I like to yeah, telescope yeah. over it um, before I pull the sheath out. So this is just a. a Can snare. you zoom in on Dr. Patel's hand, please? So this is a, a simple twenty millimeter loop snare. Um, so we're going to try and see if we can grab the, the hook. Sometimes what's going to happen, because it's been in for so long, the hook may just fall off because it's been... Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. They get, they get, it's weird. So can, you, can you take off the hemodynamics and just focus on Dr. Patel, please? Take off the... Thank you. Thank you very much. And then you got to show Floro as well. The, the yes. Snare. Floro as well on the side. Sorry. Thank you. Um, the, the other thing that I, uh, uh, we, I definitely made a mistake when we first doing these cases is um, not doing this on the general. Now, always <laughs> these cases are done on the general because if you can't take it out with, with, with this easy uh, way of uh, uh, snaring it and you have to use uh, those forceps, it can be pretty traumatic for a patient. So I highly recommend doing this on the general anesthesia. All right. So you can see we kind of grabbed the bottom. So what we're going to try and mm -hmm. do, see if we can come down and slide down. And grab the hook. And okay. It, so I grab the sheet, hook. It, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Srini. Give a hemostat. Uh, you, sure. you know, I, you know, the fellows always ask me this, and, and you'll see this is that close to the... people think you can grab any part of the filter, but if you notice, he made a really specific point about grabbing as distal as possible the very end of it, because otherwise you'll have trouble getting your sheath in. You may end up tilting the filter more than you want, and so forth. So that's a really key point when you're trying to do these. Oh, yeah, so, so that's a very important you, technique which Rahul just here? did is just telescope the 10 over oh, an 8 no, no, you just don't. try to yeah, capture so, it yeah so that's basically what I'm going to try and do is just wow. so Rahul what are, 
What are the telltale signs you look as if your filter is going to break? Is there any telltale signs you can look by pulling to say it's going to break, or it's just it's chance? Yeah, this, just it's gonna. It's not gonna work. Take the wire out on the other side. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you get you that sometimes. Is, part of it is you get uh, stretching it's, it's, as well, it's right? Going you get in. stretching, elongation, no, it's, it's fracture, good. and all well, your snare it. just oh. breaks and comes off. And so that's the reason for the telescoping of a sheath inside a. A bigger sheet. Sheet. And often, uh, like sorry. Rahul said, you, you may need access from above I because you know, even though on CT it doesn't look like the wall is is fibrosed or scarred okay, into we... the filter uh, itself. A lot of times these filters are more scarred in. And anecdotally, we've seen filters that have been in for a month that are tough to get out. We've seen filters that have been in for ten years that come out within two minutes. So it is really very hard to predict. Predict sometimes. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> So I just need to pull here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that they're just sheathing it, and you can see that. Nope, uh, uh, so the filter no, broke, huh? Yeah. Yep. So the filter snapped. The the hook right. snapped. The hook snapped. Can we put it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Now we're gonna try to go with the forceps <laughs> because it's half of it is already in yeah. the 18 18 French sheet. So, so I think so we're let's open the forceps, steps. Pablo. Yeah. yeah. So you you can see that it's it's uh I mean, I mean excuse forceps. me, uh, Damien, can you open the the forceps? So, so what, what, what uh, you can see the amount of effort that it took two of them, and you see they're much bigger than me, um, and especially Pablo here. Just one. They're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> they're both the same. They're both the same. Yeah. So, uh, so Rahul, can you talk about these forceps for so us? So these are uh, they're called Limal forceps. They're they're actually endobronchial forceps. They're let's see if I can show you this. Uh, they're on a metal rod. Um, I'm gonna see. Oops. There you go. Yep. Can you zoom in on Dr. Patel, please? The other, the, his hand. The other hand. Yeah. The yeah. Big. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here, I'll come try to bring it here. So you can see it. Uh, it opens and closes, right? So it's basically one side opens, one side stays the same. This one's already come has come pre bent, which is fine. Uh, a lot of times we'll bend them because you have to, you know, going in straight, you may not be able to grab uh, what you want to grab. So, um, so we're gonna basically just put this in. There's so no, is this with this? Do you twist and stuff, Rahul? Or no, you may have to twist. So sometimes you can use it as a blunt dissector if you I have see. to. I can hold this shape. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? That might be actually be the problem. Oh, I think we should have enough length. So, I mean, for those of you uh, who are not doing this on a regular basis, you can see how involved this is and how you need to get somebody with the expertise that we're, we're, I'm lucky enough to have in, at Sinai. We have, the, you know, obviously some of the best operators in the world. And you can see here all the equipment that you need to see, do, all the stuff that you need to do, and you can see that That's now nice. they're, they're oh, pulling it out. Nice. Uh, yep. So they, a little bit more came out. That's so like, they're just trying to go in there and grab it. One second. So this so is a really good technique, right? Four steps either from it. above or below. You huh? can sometimes uh, <laughs> a sheath from above to help remove that, you know, free the filter. Yeah, we may have to come weight. from above as well. Yeah, so that's why we did get that, Srini, like you said, and Rahul had mentioned it to us, but I thought we could try it from below, and then now we need to come from above, we will. Yeah, no, these filters are sometimes can be very difficult to remove, as you all know, and, and, and you know, it's Spectranetics, which I think now is was owned by Philips, but... You know, there's a laser sheath you can also use to help we, kind of. Yeah. We do have that in EP. We can bring that down if you want. Um, it's really what Rahul wants to use because we've got all that available here. Then we're going to have to come from above. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go come from above. So what sheet do you need, Rahul? Uh, got another super cool wire, please. Yeah. Another super cool wire. We're going to come from above with a super core. They can't really grab it anymore, right? But this is a great demonstration. You can't, PK, you can't grab it. These filters maybe grabbing and twisting they come out very easily, but they just don't sometimes. And, uh, yep. mess it up. right. And I just grab it and twist it. Yep. Around. I think Pablo, if you could elaborate what you're saying for the audience, we're trying to twist the. Yeah, sheet. we're trying to grab it and twist it around and see if we can get it, get a bit of hold of this and try to pull it out. So I'm sure you don't have enough brute force where you pull the through the forceps and still try to almost, track your sheet up. You, you, you try see, to pretty much dislodge it can, from the can wall. We mag up, can we mag up there? Yeah. Yep, yep. We, can mag up have, we, we got a little bit more in. Yeah. Laura? There you go. As you can see, yeah, we got more into the sheet. I think we only have one dirt left in there. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, there you go. Almost. <laughs> Popped almost. Out. almost there. Like I said, wow. it's not... Uh, it's not. It's, it's not. not it's not elegant. Yeah, no, I was, that's true. It's one of those few end of receiver where you can be as brutal. Well, you know, I mean, listen. The whole idea With is safety, to have, of have, have the team in place. Correct. If whatever yeah. you need to do, you do. Uh, you know, obviously, this is a situation oh. which is not easy. 
Uh, and you can see how embedded these filters can get after 13, 14 years. Um, and I think you might... Uh, now, coming from above, how will this help, Rahul? So I can just pull... I can get, get the top and then sort of pull it straight, right? I see. You, you basically collapse it from the top. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because, you know... In, in essence, right now, that is really scarred into the wall of the IVC. Yeah. You're probably, pulling the, you're probably yeah. invaginating the IVC as well. Yeah. Oh, yep. no? So, yeah, so yeah. we're going to come from the top, right? Can you give them the yeah. super core? Yep. And, uh, I think we're going to come from the top. But it's Dane. Yeah. Just super core? Grab it from the top and then yep, we got the super core. So, so we're going to have the super core from above. I'm going to go to low mag for Dr. Patel and have him. I'm just going to go on fluoro here and just show him above. So this way he can come from above. So yeah. as a, as as a oh, go ahead, Dame, can you tilt this uh, to Dr. Patel? He might need a cheater over there, right? I, I yeah, Srini, sorry, you were saying something. No, can you I was tilt this? That, you know, bring it up. Uh -huh. There you go. During the filter removal, uh -huh. you, know, there you, you always go. want to be prepared with large balloons in case you do get a perforation. Yeah, if right. Uh, that, that was my question. What do you, what balloon do you have in your back, just in case? PK, what size? So we usually use a Reliant, which I assume actually you guys have up here. Yeah, we we have yes. the large uh, occlusion balloons. Um, we have it ready if we need to. If we need it. Yeah, that's so, a very good so point. So now you're gonna go with a big sheet now. Yeah, I need to yeah, make a nick and. Yep. Give oh, give man, give Dr. Cool. Patel a a, a, <laughs> a nick. Yeah, we always have a uh, already balloon ready and and it already stink up. Hopefully, we never get to that point. Hopefully not. Uh, yes. But we always have yeah, that like in Dr. the shell. Yeah. And I'm sure when Rahul's getting down, you'll see he'll try to be you know as careful as he can because you know there's a lot of fibrotic tissue and sneakia and. Yeah. You know, you're not necessarily dealing with a wide open channel. So you may be yeah. you uh, want to be careful with slide wires, especially right, right. stiff. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, right, because you can perforate, you can dissect, and so forth. So. Yep. So, 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 so what we're doing now is we're going to take the sheet out. And we're nick. going to here's a nick. Here's a nick roll. I don't want to give it. Is there is there any role of trying to wire across the oh, filter, oh, balloon it to try yeah. to see if we can dislodge it or at least shake up a little bit by ballooning across and then trying to pull or tug? Um, sometimes you do have to balloon it to get it off. I don't know if that's going to be super helpful. Can you raise the I.I.? Sorry. Do what? Can raise you raise the I.I.? Raise the I.I. Sorry. Yeah. Ballooning is usually kind of early in the in the filter removal process, Vishal, in the sense of you're, you're trying to get the balloon between the wall. No, we need it the, bigger than that. Uh, we need it filter. Guard in, and you're trying to, you know, change the orientation so you can go right. to the top of it. You know, now I think it probably wouldn't be the best choice in this case. Makes sense. Yes. The Cook 18. Yeah, sorry. You're gonna stick it right in there. I'm gonna try. And, and I think <laughs> what Rahul is gonna do here is he's gonna put in a large sheath. He's gonna snare it from above. He's gonna get the sheath over it to try to collapse it and free up that scar tissue. Jesus Christ. Uh, so, because once he frees up that scar tissue, this filter will come out very quickly. You know, the hard yeah. part. Is Erotic tissue. It's really tough tissue. It's amazing. Uh, tough. Yeah. Uh, I think one thing I really agree with is doing under general anesthesia, but you're absolutely right. With so much manipulation and big sheets, I don't expect anyone to tolerate however how much sedation you give it. Wires got to go down, I think general anesthesia is the right way to go, which makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, Srini, you always yeah. do it under general anesthesia? Yeah, or, is, uh, or you can even take the style. Well, we, uh, we actually are first letter. attempt for most filters, unless it looks like an optese or a trapeze or one Give of the, the older yeah. that have been for a long time. We usually do Versed and fentanyl, and only if we are unable to get it out easily at that setting, then we bring them back with GA. But I, I don't think you can fault anybody for doing this case with GA because right. you can see your large sheets mm -hmm. can be. So this is an 18 French sheet, uh, PK? No, that's, that's a just dilator. A, that's just a dilator. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're yeah, just dilating it. Yeah. Yep, now we're going with the sheet. Yeah, the cook sheath's not the best sheath because it's got a terrible step off. But <laughs> Yeah, we're going to try to dilate it, but I'm always here. I can dissect a little bit if yeah. it doesn't go. <laughs> uh, Don't think you want to do a neck. Well, again, uh, again it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the together uh, approach, right? Everybody's here. Uh, you know, you got all the all the uh, people that oh, you need you to help, and now you can see the sheet goes in. You know, and now he's well. Watch out! It's going to the yeah. kidney there. Yep, yep. There you go. Now we're gonna just take it down to on top to Dr. Patel. You know on top. How the wire is kind of buckling on itself, not looping, because it shows you how much uh, fibrotic tissue and probably yeah. a corresponding stenosis and retraction that there really is there. You know. Right. Exactly. That's a very good point. Yes. All right. Um, 
Can I get the other forceps? Oh, yep, you want the other forceps, forceps uh, Chu. So we're going to open the second forceps. And remember, for those of you at home, I learned today that uh, uh, you know these are not disposable. So what I'm gonna do you got to be gonna... careful. Uh, <laughs> And, and, and make sure you send it back yeah. to your and then I'll grab your, your tap, team. And then we'll here you go. Here you go. In the middle, okay. and then I'll let go, and then you can try to pull it. Send from, it back to your team. Right. Um, so, so the forceps are going to go from above and below now. So yeah. So what? Yeah, we're going to try both forceps. So Pablo's going to grab it from uh, from below, and then I'm going to grab it from above. So what we're going to do? Yep, Pablo's on fluoro. Yep, we're going to go above and below. I can go a little bit lower, Mag, if you want, Pablo. <sighs> That's good right there? I think that's good okay. right there. Yes. All right. Oh, this is so awkward. Do we have the aortic occlusion? There you go. I got to see if I can grab. I think I got it. So again, the key thing here, PK and Vishal and Rahul knows this, and so do Pablo. Right. But you want to see if you can pull, no, pull put no, your no, sheath I'm, up, or I, I'm putting my sheath. I'm pulling. 20, 20, 20, I'm pulling. Yeah, just, hope, just have that. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. Uh, wow. All right. So maybe I got it. We got it. I think, I think <laughs> okay, you got it from above. <laughs> I I okay, you got it from above. Awesome. Okay. So let's save that, guys. For you want to send your wire up from this yep. side? Oh, you want me to send? Give me a wire, guys. That's no, right here. Just this side. Just send uh -huh. this wire up. Sure. Good. So we didn't tear apart our IVC, which well, is good. The wire goes up properly, so I think the IVC is Watch good. So we're just oh, going to wow. take it out here. And there you go. There you okay, go. let everybody take a look here. Again, you, you saw the amount of work that it took Dr. Patel and Dr. Kim to take it out. And there's the filter as a whole. Is there any tissue attached? A little bit, huh? A little bit, yeah. And then, you know, the things you obviously want to inspect the filter afterwards, make sure there's no pieces. You know, not for this filter as much because we know we have all the pieces, but I always like to take a, a single shot chest x-ray and make sure there's nothing in the chest, in the chest? Af afterwards. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do that. More so for medical legal than, than sure. for anything. Do you guys do a venogram? Or, yeah, okay. we're going to have to do a venogram because you're going to okay. have to figure sure. out. Sure, so look, yeah. let's attach this to this sheet. You want to do this one because yep. there's sure. a lot of dead space. Mm -hmm. So let's do it to this. Nice job, job, guys. Yeah. Incredible <laughs> job. Um, uh, Srini, anything, on the, anything on the technique? Man, I know you do a lot of these as well. <laughs> Flush forward. So Dr. Patel. Oh, that's no, I think it was a great demonstration of kind of all the tools and all okay, the ready? things. You yeah. All right, ready? We're going to do a DSA, guys. So we're going to do a DSA. Ready? Mm -hmm. Inject. Now, you know, if you see something, don't be alarmed. I mean, it, 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 is, it is what it is. So you got to deal with it. Or you may not see anything. Well, or <laughs> exactly. Wow, you may not see anything. Yeah. You know, so I, I just wanted to warn the audience not to, you know, yeah, yeah. You know get, get crazy. So, you know, that so. is a good point, though, PK makes this. So if you do see something, you know, depending on what you see, sometimes you can just put the balloon up. It is a low-pressure system. So just putting the balloon up, it's also closed in the retroperitoneum. So you don't necessarily need to jump to a stent graft. We do have a relatively low threshold. Though to put it, so if you so that's a great that's a great point for both Pablo yeah. and you yes. and Srini. So you guys say, God forbid, you do see a rent, right? Yeah. And it's not a massive, and the hemodynamically yeah. stable. Uh, wh uh, what is your algorithm there? You said put a balloon up. So how do you size the balloon? How long do you leave the balloon up? So I, I, the easiest thing to do is to put an aortic occlusion balloon up. So there's no sizing, right? So you just mm -hmm. basically blow it up until you get the, the peanut. You leave it up for you know five ten minutes, um, and then usually that for, I would say for vast majority that's enough. Now sometimes, especially with like the older nitinol greenfields, you'll rip the IVC apart, um, which is obviously not going to be fixed, and then you end up having to put a, a stent graft. Okay. But again, as you notice, we don't just rip it out, right? We try to sheath over, and I think where people tend to really hmm. tear the IVC is when they don't sheath over sheath the the filter. So if you do that, usually if you do get, get a hole, it tends to be pretty small. Got it. So Pablo, now now you you yes. tried the aortic uh, occlusion balloon for a little bit, but occlusion balloons not working. Stent graft. And now you're like, okay, I'm gonna have to stent graft. Well, what is your thought process? How do you size? What do you, what do you decide to do? So I, th I think the Reliant gives me a good idea because we have a lot of experience doing every stent grafting mm -hmm. and gives me a, a rough idea how big this is. We can also measure. We can also put a uh, a pigtail and, and see and, and roughly measure how how big it is. So it w it would be anywhere between. Uh, 20 to 30 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually put either a, a little aortic cuff or a iliac limb that, that comes in, in a range of five centimeter length or, or up to 10 centimeters. So so that that would be, that would be my uh, our method of uh, of doing this. Uh, we, we're very lucky that here we have consignment. So we have all this crap ready sure. to go whenever we need it. So Srini, if I have a question for you, now, now, now you're done. 
Um, what is the follow-up immediately post-op? Obviously, we're, now we're going to stent this uh, iliac vein. Um, and but but what is your post-op follow-up for the IVC, Srini? What do you what do you do with that? I mean, we it, it's symptomatic, right? We usually see them at one month in the clinic to see if they're you know. In this case, this patient has you know leg swelling left greater than right. I think you're going to you know treat that today. So we just follow them and see how they're doing symptomatically. We use ultrasound. The only time we get CTs post IVC filter removal is if we've had a complication. Okay. Or an issue. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was one of the audience questions yeah. as well. Oh, the audience. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, 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 so you guys, you do a plain yeah, chest X ray to look for debris in anywhere. In yeah, we, the, in, just, we would just do it like at the, uh, you know, just with the flora, right? With we'll the flora. Yeah, we'll Got do it. it. Um, especially the the conical ones with the ones with legs. Right. Um, because you never, sometimes they have very small legs. You're not really sure if you got them all out. So you just want to make sure. So actually, I'll start the case with a chest X-ray because if there are already legs there, I don't want to get blamed for it. That's a good point. And then we'll we'll end the case with a chest X-ray, and that's how I just teach my fellows to so start and end the case with the that's with a, a chest idea. X-ray. Okay. Um, so that way you know uh, that you got everything. The follow-up, again, as Srini said, is, is purely symptom, um, symptomatic. So if they're having symptoms after the filter removal, then I'll get a CAT scan. But typically, they they usually don't. They're they're pretty straightforward, and we'll just um, do this. So. For the non-complicated filter removals, we, actually, I don't really see them back in the office. So if it's a straightforward filter removal, usually oh. I'll talk to them afterwards. It's done with a little versus sentinel. I'll just sentinel. I'll talk to them in, in the the holding area, and then that's that's but the end. Do, of it. do you keep them overnight, or you send them? No, home? no. But everyone goes home. Everyone goes home. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, for Unless, something like this, you'll keep. Um, no, we should send them. You will send them. Yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. We're pretty. We have a low threshold, and no, the hospitals are very full. That, because honestly, we don't know, right? I yeah, mean, you know, yeah. we're we're worried about you know anything happening in the yeah. IVC down the road. But you're saying if it doesn't happen acutely, likely, unlikely going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So it, obviously, if she wakes up in excruciating pain, sure, then, then sure. Yeah. But it it's pretty rare that they have to stay. I have to that's say. great. Yeah. I don't know, Srini, what's your experience with? Uh, Keeping patients. Yeah, no, no, Rahul, same. We send them home the same day. And again, unless we had a complication like a perforation or some type of injury like that, they all go home the same day. And, and you know, PK and, and all the cardiologists know this right atrium is the lowest pressure point in the body. The blood naturally wants to go there, not out into the retroperitoneum. So low pressure system, you don't really have any problems, you know, right. knock on wood. Wait, so and you and you restart your anticoagulation next day morning, or you just send them out on a pill, or how does it work? Well, especially in this case, right? Because so, we know that we're going to stent this iliac. We're, we're going to have to leave her on anticoagulation for a little bit. So, so what, if, what's it, your for, if it's just a straight filter removal, if it's going to be very, very complicated, I tend to take them off their anticoagulation and then start the Lovenox basically before they go home or whatever. You know, I usually give them a dose of Lovenox and tell them to start their DOAC the next day when they go home. If it's not super comp if it's not super penetrated or anything, actually we'll leave oh, them on their anticoagulation. We don't tend not to stop oh, their okay. AC. Oh yeah, wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good How about you, Pablo? Yep. Anything different on that? No, no, nothing different. Nothing different. But um, I, you know, I'm a huge proponent of stopping anticoagulation after this. Yes. So oh, the yeah, next, so that's a different the next problem. day, yeah. uh, if it's if it's not a complicated case and they didn't have a major PE or anything like that, uh, I would probably start on aspirin in day one and and no more uh, for anticoagulation with uh, with the Novax or or Coumadin or any other agent. Yeah. And I guess one of the audience had a quick question for you as well. Would would the IVUS being filled up with a chronic thrombus change your strategy in pulling, pushing, or any of the techniques or anything changes? It remains the same. I mean, it's here still, we tried to IVUS. It remains the same. Although this filter, we've seen a couple of them uh, where it's gotten filled with clot. And if it's been in long enough, it's actually calcified within within it. And those ones you're just not going to be able to to get out. So those ones will just end up stenting, stenting through. We had one which it, it looked like a boulder inside the, the IVC. So those ones you're not going to get out. But if it's uh, chronic, we've done ones where they're, it's just occluded, right? It's chronically mm -hmm. occluded and we've taken them out. Um, there you can actually be a little bit more aggressive because the IVC is occluded, right? So you're not really worried about it bleeding at that point. Got it. Um, and you're probably going to end up having to stent through the occlusion later. So, right. so, we, so we've okay. got 10 more minutes, Vishal and, and <coughs> Srini. So what I want to do is not talk to both of them about stenting this, uh, this thing and what's your technique uh, that yeah, you guys yeah, do? Do in terms of this this uh, filter, can you play the IVUS so they can look it over the first run, please? And how do you guys size in this type of very chronically, obviously, it's compressed and uh, and scarred down IV, uh, uh, iliac vein? So let's go. Let's start from the IVC. This is again for the audience. This is starting from the filter and coming down. Now, which of, which of the areas you guys mark and measure? I'm just curious on how you would do it. So here's the IVC coming down. You can see the IVC. Looks good. You're going to see the confluence very shortly. And then there it is. And now, then now you're going to see the ostium is going to get really, really compressed in a second, which shows that you really do need right to there. take care of that compared to the contralateral. Yeah. And then uh, and then now you can see the entire segment is, is pretty much compressed. A little bit better there. 
and then it gets worse as you get further down into the external iliac vein. So how do you size this, uh, Pablo? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, so I, I think uh, with the newer stents, newer uh, stents that are uh, indicated for uh, iliac vein stent, they, uh, the treatment modality for me changed a little bit. With the worst than uh, back in the day, Boston Scientific worst than we used to cross the IVC, and uh, we, we're okay with that. Now I try not to get into the IBC if it's possible. Got if it. I have to get into the IBC, I'll try to put uh, two stands on both sides because we don't we don't want any complication of creating an acute DBT on the contralateral side. Sure, so that's exactly. number one. So I look at the eyewitness, see where the lesion starts, and start from there. So here it looks and like then, it's the ostium, right? It looks and, like the ostium, but yes. very, the sure, cellular sure. room, yeah. And, and the, uh, the sizing of the stain, I, I, I try to go by uh, by the eyewitness. We look at the normal area, and we try to uh, But in this kind of case, I think yeah. is the audience would ask you, like, there is no real normal area, right? There, so no, the, I, I, I agree. There's no a normal area. We try to... See if there's anything that looks like a normal area. Undersizing is a major issue. Exactly. Like so we never want to undersize anything like this. So right. I, I almost never go below 16. I agree. It's always yeah. 16 mm -hmm. to 18 to 20, yeah. but I never below 16. I yeah. think that's a mistake that a lot of um, – you know, uh, some upper can yeah. make. I mean, there maybe, are yeah. obviously one offs. You have yeah. some tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny woman, then maybe a 14. But even then, I still put 16s and just dilate it to 12 and let them get to 16 naturally, you know? Because they're all right. self expanding stents. So, so, what would you guys choose here? Would you go with the 16 or an 18? Uh, I'd or? probably put a 16. Uh, yeah. yeah. 16? 16, so you do 16 18, and the longest you have, right? Yeah. So, here, I think we're going to end up stenting down all the way to the ligament. And then the question is, what do you do about the common femoral? Um, <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the question is, a lot of time we, we, we try not to go passing with the because that's the area that yeah. we've been. 16 I, but, long. But I think, I think uh, having this much amount of stenosis in that area, you, you sort of have to stem below because you, you, you want to also think about the patency of the stent uh, yeah. later on. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes what we'll do is we'll come over, come down, and then, because obviously we, we can't, right balloon. now we can't balloon through through this to get the common femoral. So we'll come either up and over or come down and then balloon into the common femoral and just try to balloon the inflow to improve it. Improve it. So we could do that offline, I guess, once yeah. we do this. That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. So yeah, so David's got to get the stent. Um, and so so you do a 16. How do you, there's another common question we all get asked, and I guess we got the, the you bowl, all three of you here to ask. How do you hit the ostium? How do you determine where the ostium is? Do you mark on the, on the, on the screen? Do you guys have a contralateral uh, you know, catheter or some sort to kind of give you the ostium. It's it, it's still the hardest one. So there, you know, yes. there are different stents that are designed to overcome that that issue, right? So the the we don't use a lot of wall stents anymore, and I think those ones were very hard to nail the ostium, which I think Pablo sort of alluded to earlier. The I think the barred stent um, they have that flared open end, so it's about twenty percent bigger than the actual diameter of the stent. It's designed specifically, more or less, to basically flower into the IVC and so you basically pull it down, pull it down right. onto the ostium. And you can do that with the, the Medtronic stents as well. It's a little bit harder because it doesn't flower, but uh, it does kind of give you the same effect. Um, there's, uh, well, there, there are other stents that are not available here, but there's like the Duo stent, the, the Bentley. Um, so so it, yeah. now you bring up a great point for, for the three of you. Actually, Srini, you can answer this one. Is there any any preference? I mean, we get asked all the time. Do you guys, you know, if, you, if and a lot of the people, yeah. you know, in the community, the hospital says choose one stent. They're, they're not going to give you two, three stents, right, Pablo and Srini? So so what do you do? You guys find a major difference between say the two leading stents, the BD and the and the um, the Medtronic stent, or no, Srini? So, so I think one of the problems is we don't have head-to-head, -head, right, between the, yeah. the old, the original wall stent by Boston Psy, the Venovo by BD, and the Medtronic, I think it's the Abre, right, Rahul? Right. And, you know, anecdotally, what really busy Venus operators are telling me and, and seeing at a lot of the meetings that I go to is yeah, that they prefer no? Abre stent because of okay. its radio. What about force BD? No, no 16s in the BD? And so that's the reason why. But again, there's no head-to-head -head comparison, so I think it really yeah. boils down to dealers. So we've got 120s, 120s in the Medtronic, and I asked them to just go back there. Again, we're lucky, uh, all of us here at Sinai, we have all three, the, all two that we can, we can pick from. <laughs> so, so he's going to look whether he has longer in the BD. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously this goes to our nine French system, and uh, we can get ready. So let's just – any other questions, Vishal, uh, on your end? 
No, I think I mean that that's a great point. The audience already looking at the outflow. The outflow in this case looks a little bit compromised. So affecting the patency of the stent, I guess, becomes an issue. And then Rahul pretty much answered it rightly. Is like they could you already have a right sided axle. You can technically go up and over just balloon it to make sure the outflow is still maintained. Oh, and then inflow, it needs to mean, be done. Inflow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, inflow. Yeah, inflow. sorry. Yeah, inflow. So, so the, the reverse. Question, so the question is, I guess, when do you stent the common femoral pops? I mean, you you were talking a little bit about that, right? You know, I, I, I try not to, right. uh, but right. sometimes, sometimes you, you you don't have an option. I mean, if it's severely stenotic and <clears throat> and you have to do it, you have to do it. I, I have very few cases that I've done that. Um, so you just balloon it, balloon it, and see. Hopefully, it doesn't recoil. Or but doesn't... I, I I try really not to go uh, past the common uh, um and try not to go past the inguinal ligament if possible. But rare cases when patients have a uh, femoral papillary extending into the iliac uh, um, DVT, severe cases, they, they can present like that. Yeah, so, we had um, a case of a young man who came in, and same thing, we left it alone. Uh, we did the balloon, we sent it, obviously, what we needed to, and a lice to what we needed to. Then uh, uh, we sent him home on anticoagulation. Seven days later, he clots off and comes back with the common femoral completely uh, collapsed and clotted off. Yeah. Ballooned it again. And we sent him home with a larger balloon, kept serially ballooning it. So far, he's been okay. But it's it's worrisome that, that this can, you know, obviously yeah. thrombose off again. I mean, the, the failure thing. I see in the common femoral is that I think you look at it, you're like, oh, a 12 millimeter or 10 millimeter seems right. But people don't walk around with normally with a 10 millimeter common mm -hmm. femoral. It's like 16, 18. So I think, again, you don't want to obviously oversize so much that you're rupturing it. But I think you do need to be very aggressive in ballooning. Uh, the common femoral, and you know, we'll make the effort to go down into the SFV um, it's for fun to do kissing balloons if we have to. Because again, I think once you start getting, once you start stenting below the inguinal ligament, we know it's going to go down, and they're, they're going to get worse. Right. right. So, right. yeah. So it's, and it's how about surgical options, Pablo? As a surgeon, any surgical options for this kind of common femoral issue? Say you do this and you deal with it. I'm just asking for the audience-wise. Uh, anything. Um, I, uh, surgical options are very tough. I mean, we do, we have done a lot of open venous you know, vascularization with no major uh, um, success. Um, what I can tell you is that if, let's say, we have an acute DVT and we don't have the option of uh, a, um, a thrombolysis or catheter-based uh, therapy, we, we have done fully catheter uh, embolectomies, and what we do at the end is an AB fistula oh. uh, between the femoral vein and, 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 the, and the artery. So we... And and, and, okay. and the reason for that is to increase the to increase the inflow. Okay. Uh, so that's something that is not proven, but it can be considered if you want to increase the inflow, make it fistula. Got Although it. that's only been done in surgical bypasses, not surgical. not endo. Uh, yeah. I know no, no, the no, Michigan. That, that's all, that's yeah. that's the case scenario where yeah. the patient no. is pregnant or yeah, had yeah, a recent course. surgery. You can lice them. And you Although can, you know you nowadays with there's new, especially on the acute side, there's so many new devices that don't require TPA. Right. Um, if you we had to, we could we could do it. Okay, yeah. so what? So which stent do you guys want? I, I want you guys show us your two, techniques. You, you uh, what do you one? What do you guys like out of the two? Yeah. The so we have both uh, BD and the other one. Stand all the way down. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Anything in particular, Rahul, uh, Pablo? We have both. Abre or BD? I don't really care. I I want to use Abre, but yeah, what, sure. What, yeah. Where you? I mean, yeah, let's do the Abre. So let's take. We're gonna get the Abre, please. We're gonna get the Abre, and and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get started with this. Um, yeah. yeah, and as uh, we said, I mean, we chose the Abre here. I, I do think it has a little bit more radial force, but there is no data to show this is actually better than than the other. Um, you know, there was there was a Boston Scientific one that was out. Yes. Yeah, so that one got pulled. I don't think it's ever going to come back, but it was a little bit different. That was a closed cell design. That one had a lot of radial force. There's one from Gore that's in study now, um, which seems interesting. They actually have an IVC stent, so... Um, you know, they, they have the bigger sizes. Again, I think, you know, per the IFU here, it's not such a big deal, but, you know, we do size these stents, especially for non-occlusive lesions. We do use the uh, use the IVIS to size them in terms of placing them, uh, so you don't want to undersize them. Right. So, I so think... Rahul, any... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, any, my fault. Any, any role of uh, pre-dilatation with a balloon in this case? Um, so, if, obviously, if it's a CTO, then yes, but uh, for... The floor is right there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. For, for this, I don't think we need to pre-dilate. It's, again, it's sort of like an external iliac artery lesion. You need to pre... You have to be careful uh, more. I think you're flexing the obvious. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you want to make sure... Um, okay, good. See. 
You're going to want to take some dye through the other side? Yeah. You can probably inject through this. No, you probably can, right? You can. You can. You can, right? So um, do, It's a 9 and a 10. You yeah, just cover it up with a little, so you don't spray yeah. or spray or something. <laughs> Just uh, this button. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't want to blast myself with radiation here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring the see the the yep. Yeah. There you go. I'm sorry. I'm cool. Uh huh. Go ahead. A little bit Close. higher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we need to be a little bit higher. Yep. Yeah. So in terms of positioning, PK, you were asking about this. I mean, there you can imagine there's there's 20 different ways to do it. You know, some yeah. operators. Will be in the grams. Mm -hmm. Another one. I can give a little more dye. Hold on. Uh, uh, Someone will put a pigtail up one side. Yeah. To do, do you actually have a pigtail? Yeah, we have a pigtail. It'll yeah, be easier. Actually, a pigtail, guys. It'll be easier if we just put and, a pigtail up yeah, the other side. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. we they want to show them and, the techniques. Yeah. yeah, and then once uh, you put know, Rebel the does this, a lot of times operators will lock the table. They'll draw on the screen. I mean, there's so many different things you can do. He's just going to put because that you want to make sure yeah. you don't miss. You might need a cheater, Ray. Like Pablo was saying, is there is about a 15% chance of contralateral acute DVT if you extend too far you into got the intervening. I think so. Cool. So, yeah, I well, think that's a very important point. Is that, that is that is that also data with the newer stents, uh, Bastrini, or is that all older stuff? Old, uh, old wall stent data. Wall stent yeah, data, that's so. what I because I've been hearing from from the companies that yeah. that's not true uh, with the uh, with the newer the, with the newer stuff. So and I'm I not sure. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. You're right on. It's old data, basically. And so I think that's, it just shows you kind of, we think that we need data in the POD space. We, we definitely need it even in the Venus space. There you go. Yeah, well, let me get yeah so you. I think this is a good point where he's marking with the right side. I usually also do it like Shini talked about. I was said, lock the table, mark it on it, but I was guided so you can actually see the confluence. Oh, of course. So that's another uh, lesion. Of, uh, but getting a pigtail obviously also helps us to and geographically define the anatomy. Or you could do a combination of two to really, if you're not really sure. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you know, these newer stents, they, they have a much better delivery mechanism than the, the old wall stents. So again, I, I still like the technique of bringing it up over the, bif over the, the mm -hmm. bifurcation, flowering it and just bringing it down. Putting it back. It down. And you're not worried about it. One of the questions you, we often get is, are you gonna hurt the, the, by pulling the stent down that's deployed? Is that anything gonna happen? No, I mean, I don't, obviously, within yep. reason, you know, you're not yanking it, but. We just pull pull back until you reach tension, and then, you know, yep. you're pretty good. I think I think it's up, right? Uh, no, I don't think you're there yet. Yeah, there we are. Oh, there you are. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Do you need dye in this or anything? Yeah. So let's... Okay, this is dye, I think. This is dye. Yeah, right? that's yep. dye. Yep. Hundred percent. Yep. Uh huh. I can do this. I swear. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me when. <laughs> yep. Tell me when. Uh, let's see, where's the picture? Okay, here. Yeah. So maybe just a little bit higher, Pablo, you think? Or you think we're good there? Uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, we, again, we, we have a different technique. I, I, I go, I, I try to obviously mark all the areas and then look at the bony, um, uh, the bony, the bony structure and then just lock my That's eyes on the bony me. structure to deploy this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we look good. Maybe a little bit back because yeah, I think, I think we can flower here lower. though. Yeah. Yes. And then you can pull it back. It, it, it is yeah, right exactly. there. I injected for both. Yeah, we can start there and then sort of pull and it back. Then we can start deploying. So that's why I just, right I just did both yeah, there yeah. for you I, guys. I think that's perfect. Yeah, like yeah. Right here. Yeah. And then the end of the pig tail is right at the confluence. Yeah. You want to... No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Please come on, roll. All right. So again, this the Medtronic one sort of a wheel back. It it stays pretty stable. Yeah. So you can see I'm sort of, it does jump a little bit, but here it's flowering and I'm going to pull back a little bit. Yeah. You yeah. Wanna, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, We're beautiful. There. that's beautiful. You got it. Yeah. 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 And we know the sheath is all the way back. Yeah. So sheath, we're good. Uh, yeah. It's also only 120. Yeah. We're done. Perfect. Cool. So now we can, uh, let me walk just this make, out make for sure you. Before uh -huh. I get, uh, okay, yeah. Yep. Just, so I'm just going to walk this out. So now I guess the question becomes a little, yep. Is now down below, right? Yeah. So let me show you below here. Uh, let's do a cine. Yep, cine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You guys can tell me what. That's fine. We'll do it this way. Huh. Actually, just actually, leave it. Nice. Pretty good. Up. Yeah. yeah, I think we just balloon yeah, it. Yeah, right? just balloon yeah. it, right? Yeah. So uh, now tell us about the balloon sizing. There's another question because obviously in that area it's very compressed, yeah. right? So balloon sizing wise, how do you choose? Do you start small, 12, 10? I, I, no, I think I, if the stand is 16, I go, I, I go with the 16. One to one. Yes. Yeah. 16 millimeter balloon, please, from Doctor Love's room. 
Uh, he has a 1640 Opt Optiz balloon. No, no, Opto Pro, Opto Pro, uh, Opto Pro, Opto Pro. Yeah, we tend to use the what is the Atlas Gold? You do, huh? Yeah. See, so here, because to save costs, yeah. we share with Dr. Long. Yeah, yeah, of course. So we yeah. use the pediatric <laughs> balloons <laughs> that, he, that he uses for pediatric valve So if you do the Opto Pro, you have to be careful, especially with the wall stents. They tend to tear. They do, huh? They tear and then they can shear, which is wow. another problem. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so yeah. see that's you learn everything every day, right? So yeah. now we know we got to get the other one. I think Pablo's been called to remove one before. <laughs> for someone's uh, popliteal. Oh uh, Lord! Yeah, so that's we just checked yeah. another ACT. We're at three seven six. So we're at good ACT. Uh, our ACT uh, is anticoagulant. Now let's talk about management of the sheets. You have a sixteen French, uh, excuse me, eighteen French on the right, right groin, ten French on the left. Ten obviously is going to be pretty easy to manage. How do you manage the eighteen? Do you per close the vein? Do you guys use a closure device or just good old manual pressure? Per string. Oh, you do purse strings, yeah, okay? Just, just Yourself? Uh, or hold pressure. Uh, a, a good old fellow manual purse strings. Good old fellow. And then <laughs> for, the neck, for the neck, for sure, we just hold pressure. I'm not purse stringing. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. okay, for, for, for being a for being yeah. uh, procedure. And right, do you right, guys right. reverse the anticoagulation is the question. Right now, the ACT is quite high. So you have the Atlas? Vita. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. even more expensive, but. Yeah, that's quite hard, hard to avoid it. So, you know, there's a shortage of balloons, as you guys know. We can, we're not able to get everything we used to have. Yeah, I mean, there aren't, yes. there aren't a lot of options in terms of once you get above 12, right? Yep. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. Unless, unless the ACT is, is over 300, I, I, I tend yeah. to not to reverse these patients. Yeah. Um, so, Pablo, you so, Just because no, he's no. also going to get an iliac vein stand, and, yeah. and we, we don't really want to reverse it at this time. Yeah. So, yeah. what, what level? That's a great question. What level of ACT do you pull it? Do you feel comfortable pulling? Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, be anywhere between, um, yes, yes, yes. Le definitely less than 200. Uh, less than uh, around 100 should be. So, you wait, be. you wait until she drops and then you pull huh? it. Yeah, I don't think. What's, what was the last ACT? Three something, I believe. Oh, 350. 350. A little higher? Oh, 376. Right there. Perfect. Yeah. Well, actually, you got to go yeah, a little higher. Yeah, that's a little right? bit high. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, why, that's yeah. why I was asking. And that's a little bit high. Um, a um, I mean, it, it, it's just a range. Yeah, like usually 50 to 75. Like I'm okay with it. Almost it's coming down. Yeah, we, it's coming down, and we can give we can give 20 to 40 of programming to bring it down a little bit. If if, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah, I think by the that's time what, we're that's what I was gonna yeah. do. I was gonna give uh, you yeah. protamine. Yeah, Ready? Go I think I think we should up. bring it down a little bit. Oh, sorry, I did the wrong one. I did oh, that's sitting. okay. So I'm just injecting <laughs> here. It's going up. Sorry. <laughs> Slowly, tell me when, guys. Are you so happy I there? I mean, so, Dr. Krishna, are you okay with 40 of programming? Yeah, sure. Can we have 40 of programming, please? Down. Yeah. Okay. So again, I just was again. Always good to, to talk to one another. So, obviously, I asked Dr. Patel, how, you know, how do you gauge the balloon? I guess you go by profile, Rahul. And yeah, we usually use the... Yep. <laughs> oh, you use Endoflator. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh. My oh. fellows aren't as strong as you. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> if Pablo did this, it will be the size of the IVC. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm really going to go up gently yeah. here. The so again, thing on you is uh, cine venogram is that you can see there's collaterals around the groin. So I think that common femoral vein external. Tell me one, guys. You got to take it up. Okay. Just yeah, that, that's a very important point to note what Srini told about is that get, gauging the collateral. No, not, yeah. You're right. Because the disease extends further down. A little more. And eventually yeah. you have to come back and try to expand on that's the SV okay. uh, we part of the vein as well to really have a good uh, inflow coming in. So yeah, that makes uh, very good sense. That's right. Let's come down. So yeah, usually so Srini, do you how often do you per close versus manual this in your That's practice? what I was gonna ask you guys, yeah. Because per close in the veins have become very common now, guys. Yes. A lot of people are doing it, especially more. oh sorry. Especially, I per close all my EP veins. Guys. There you go. Especially the EP guys are per closing, and I know Vishal is very aggressive with per close. And any thoughts on that, Pablo, as a surgeon, per close in the vein? I mean Ooh, that she felt that. Yeah. You know, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know any of the data behind that. Uh, there is none. <laughs> there is none. It, it, is, no it is, it is, a pretty, uh, is a pretty big needle that puts a stitch, and the veins tend not to be well, that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good. Come back a little more. they can tend yeah. to be friable. So I, I have really no experience really, really to gentle. comment yeah. on that. I, 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 I like to hold pressure stopped. on them because. Uh, you know, we, we do surgeries and quite frankly, we hold pressure in a lot of uh, you know, structure that bleed yeah. and uh, after a good pressure, they all keep stop. On, keep on. So I, I tend to use the old conservative method. That's pretty good. That's good. Yeah, it looks good. It expanded. Yeah, we're just trying to be very gentle and uh, obviously could not get into any issues with the uh, vein. Like, 
a good rule of thumb is, you know, people consider common iliac vein around 16, external around 14, common femoral vein around 12 yeah. or more. Okay. Ready? Some people DSA use the bike. area. Yep. Yep. You know, okay. Cindy? Wow. wow. Fantastic. Nice. Is that something to worry about there? Nah. Okay. Good. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Beautiful. Just do a, we'll do a quick Ivis and then we'll be done. So, um, and then, uh, so, 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 uh, how do you guys always post Ivis? That's another question I often get. Uh, we tend to always post Ivis. We do. Uh, we have, we sure. have it there. So they always ask this question, uh, Rahul and, and Pablo and Srini. What are you looking for post Ivis? Are you looking for uh, poor stent expansion? Are you looking for compression of the stent? What are the things you guys are looking for post Ivis? Really, just some pinch points, right? So if it's poor expansion in areas, especially, you know, bad, uh, mm -hmm. got it. Uh, may thinner lesions, you know, you may not, it looks good, but it's just pancaked. Uh -huh. You can't really tell on a 2d image, you know? Right. Good. Yeah. Here's... For, for me, it's make sure that, uh, we, we have, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. land this thing right. correctly, yeah. proximate and distal, and more, for, more so, uh, more right, so let's record above below. Make sure yep. there's no, All right, we're going to record above below guys record. So let's see, I'm coming real slow here. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that yeah. for every, everybody Very at home. Nice. That's just unbelievable what Roll did. That's awesome. And look at the nice expansion. Do you guys look for infolding? Because sometimes you see the, the struts infolded. And that's when we tend to post dilated again. But yeah. here it looks pretty good. The stent looks really good. And then the distal is actually we not so oh, Now we're in the, the sheet. The sheet. Yeah, we're in the sheet now. Yeah. So we're going to have to do what uh, Dr. Patel said is probably go back in and do it. Would you do it in this setting? Would you wait to see how she does? How do you guys just want to do that? I, I would say wait. Yeah, the flow yeah. looks so much better. She might be enough. It looked pretty good. I, yeah. I understand the eye didn't yeah. look that great, but I certainly it, it looked a lot better than what we saw. Yeah. And without and the see, compression, yeah, it yeah, should yeah. get better. And yeah. see how, how the symptoms. So the I guess, uh, if Srini, any last comments before I, I, we sign off? And we want to be on time or a little bit late. But any last comments, yeah, Srini? No, I think, uh, real quick, I think the way to think about it is that, look, she did not thrombose with that common femoral vein and that external being that tight and that right. narrowed with all the metal she had in there. So I think there's nothing wrong with just waiting. Right? Got it. Well, uh, Rahul, any final thoughts, any tips that yeah. you want to leave no, them with? No, I think with? one thing also is, like, again, like we said, we're going to wait on the common femoral. I think once place um, my fellows or, you know, new people get stuck is they're trying to make it look perfect. And like, because you trade it like an artery, like it has to look perfect. And, right. and here, I don't think it needs to look perfect. I think if you try to chase perfect, you end up in trouble, right? Right. And so here, right. she's got good outflow. You know, we're not going to make her like 100% back to normal. No. But if we can get her symptoms down 50, 60%, I think she'll be very, very happy. That'll be fantastic. Yeah. Pablo, any final thoughts? No, I, th I thought it was a great case. Uh, it was a uh, good collaboration between the, uh, different uh, departments in, in the hospital. Uh, the approach from b below and on top, really, I think th that was the key for this case. Uh, yes. And, um, you know, I, th I, th I thought it was a great case. Well, thank you. Well, listen, I, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank, uh, obviously, Dr. Tamala. I know you're an NCVH. You have a lecture later. So thank you so much for uh, for making time. Make sure to give Dr. Mattisari a hard time for blowing uh, Rahul off and yeah. me off and Kumar off, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, and Pablo off. But uh, no, really, all jokes aside, thank you very much. Um, you know, and on top of that, my two colleagues here are good friends and, and really just so incredible in terms of teaching how the proper way of doing it, discussing the, the, the pitfalls, the, uh, the complications, uh, you know, and, and also the right way of approaching uh, this particular disease. Obviously, the indication in, in all of our opinions was probably a little bit softish because of the fact that we, we this filter hadn't thrombosed. But I think with a young lady who's 50-something years old, long time to go, like Dr. Kim said, anticoagulation is not without its side effects. So you do, do have to think about these things. So, so you know, with that with that being said, I want to thank all of you. And, uh, and we're going to sign off here, with Vishal, and uh, we'll see everyone next month for another great live case. Uh, just a little plug uh, we're about NYEVS. We'll be doing NYEVS. Obviously, Dr. Tamala, Dr. Patel, Dr. Kim, uh, myself and Vishal will all be there. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of interesting cases. We have live cases from Leipzig with uh, Dirk and Andre doing live cases, Chris Metzger doing live cases, Steve Hanau doing live cases, and obviously uh, 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 ourselves as well, and Fadi Saab and, um, and, um, and um, Jihad Mustafa. So we have live cases from all over. On top of IR, uh, you know, is going to do some great 
great venous cases from down below. And Dr. Kim and, and his colleagues are going to run the aortic, uh, you know, uh, symposium, especially with cadaver labs, uh, with a tremendous amount of teaching uh, case presentations. For the fellows, there's a fellows case competition for venous, arterial, and and uh, and aortic, and uh, where we give out, give out great prizes. So obviously, it's a limited number. We have 60 fellows for the, both the venous and our, our side uh, combined. So and then we have another 30 for the aortic side. So 90 fellows. Last year we sold out within a month and a half. So uh, it's, please, if you're really interested, go ahead and get involved and and come join us in New York. So thank you again, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you.